Good evening and welcome to Pace University's Parent Chat. My name is Robina Shep. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Management and Placement at Pace University. And I feel like I've, I know many of you already because this has been a long journey of talking to you about your admissions at Pace and we're so excited to see you here tonight and we'll be even more excited to see your children on campus this fall. So as you know, tonight um, I've asked a panel to join us to talk about um, our plans for returning to, par to campus in the fall. In a, and in addition to that, we're gonna talk about life and learning at Pace and all of the wonderful experiential education that we deliver as a regular part of the Pace experience. So before we start, I just want to remind you, um, many of you have already deposited for your students to start in the fall. Some of you have, are waiting to deposit. Uh, as you know, we have moved our deposit deadline to June 15th. And in sort of a recognition of the unusual circumstances of this year, we have also decided to extend uh, our guaranteed refund until August 1st. So we are excited. We ex are excited that you're here. And now I'm going to introduce our panel. So first off, we have Marvin Krizlov, who is the president of PACE. Thank you, Marvin. And we have our provost and vice president for our executive vice president for academic affairs, Vanya Quinones. And then we are joined by Hilary Nepper, who is our interim associate provost for academic affairs and Nicole Thompson, our Vice President of Administrative Operations, and someone who many of you probably have already talked to, or at least you've talked to his team, Mark Stevens, our University Director of Financial Aid. So I'm going to ask each panelist to introduce themselves, to talk a little bit about our work in getting ready to return to campus and also about how we live and learn at PACE. Um, and I will, and then we will go to the question and answer section of the presentation. So I'd like to start with President Krizlov. Thank you, Rubina, and, and good evening, everybody, or good afternoon. Um, welcome. I'm the president of PACE. I've been at PACE now for three years, and I really feel very honored to be part of this wonderful, supportive community. Um, it really is a family at PACE, and the faculty and staff are incredibly dedicated to providing students with the best possible experience. I teach myself, and so I've really enjoyed that experience of getting to know um, the students as well. So in terms of this fall, what you should know is that we've been working very intensely for many months now with the task force of many people, faculty, faculty from our College of Health Professions, staff, and, and outside professionals, and thinking about the ways in which the education we deliver will need to be modified for this fall. We're very committed to making sure that we are only utilizing the best practices in terms of health and safety, facilities, residence life and academics. And we're deeply committed to providing the kind of in-person experience that students want to have. Um, how we live, how we study, how we work, and how we play will be different this fall, and we know that. I've been part of a task force comprised of universities throughout New York State, private universities, who are working together and have delivered a report to the governor, and it's available online, to talk about the best practices in all of these areas. And we are continuing to have dialogue with the other universities, but also the governor's office. Our committee and, and the people that have been involved include people at the highest levels of public health, infectious disease, immunologists, and doctors. And so we've been spending a lot of time thinking about how we can fulfill our mission for you and your students to provide a high quality education in a safe and responsible way. And lastly, I just want to say that I'm really looking forward to seeing you and your students here with us this fall. 
Thank you so much, President Krizlov. And now I'd like to turn to Provost Quinones. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the PACE community. Um, first, I am very excited that you're considering PACE. As Marvin said, I've been at PACE two years and is an amazing institution, and we're looking forward to see you in the fall. Um, we're getting ready for you and for all our students on the fall 2020. Our plan is to resume in-person education and to be fully, um, fully in session throughout the whole academic year. Uh, to successfully accomplish this, we must be ready and we are ensuring ourselves that we will have the health and safety of our community as a priority. We will observe all the federal regulations as well as the uh, safety, um, safety restarting. As Marvin said, we have a task force that has been meeting the whole semester, and now we are coordinating how to open the fall. Our decisions will be informed by the state health department and by the safety of our community. We will observe all the state and federal regulations and in our restarting process. The task force meets regularly, and we are making decisions, and we will implement all the latest information uh, for our planning. I want to ensure that our community is getting ready to ensure that we will have a safety learning environment and that the, we will provide research and working environment to enrich our students' um, education. Currently, we are conducting academic planning to have different um, hybrid or different scenarios, most to ensure that we will have an enriched learning opportunities for our students. All, all our faculty are getting certified to teach online to ensure that they will provide, deliver quality and high practices for our education. Faculty are also getting ready to offer courses online in case of some of our students cannot be in person due to quarantine isolation or unable to attend. So we will have both modes available in person and online if it's needed for the students. Once again, I want to thank you for considering PACE. It's an amazing community and I hope to see you in the fall. Thank you so much, Provost Quinones. And now I would like to introduce Hilary Nepper. Thank you, Rabina. And apparently I'm here also because I've been here for almost 10 years, which is the longest I've been anywhere. I'm a professor in the graduate program for public administration. And this is just an amazing um, opportunity to share with you what we've been working on all semester. So I'm really excited everybody joined us today for this. So I'm working on this collaborative team and it's the student operations group. And we are working on everything related to student life that is not academic, although I do include student support. So we're working on the residences, campus life, Greek life, extracurricular activities. We're working on what the libraries and those facilities are gonna be like, what our learning centers, which are really broad and in-depth tutoring centers. So we're all coming together and we're working closely with our facilities and our health and safety folks as we develop our plans. And we've been working all spring on what our plans are gonna look like, what it's gonna be in terms of building community, because we know how important and how vibrant it is for our students to be together, to be together on campus to build the educational experiences, but also those extracurricular activities, which really is what helps our, our students really make that transition from high school to adulthood. And so it's been a great opportunity for us to come together in ways we haven't really previously. And it's really been this deep, engaging commitment to what is this new virtual world like prior to coming to campus, because we're going to be doing stuff over the summer. And I'm pretty sure that Rubina's folks will be sharing more of that with you. We want to make sure everybody feels connected before they step in the door. We, what are our residences going to look like? What does it look like when you need to have um, group projects and where are you going to be? And looking at all of the health and safety ramifications in this new environment. But we are 
prepared. We are really excited. We will have all of this information laid out for you. We've been working on so many different contingency plans just to make sure that whatever our final um, opportunities are that we look at in terms of health and safety and the guidelines that are going to be released, we are really excited to be able to share with you these plans. And we have a bunch of terrific folks working tirelessly to make sure that all of our students, both our new incoming students and our returning students, continue to have the great PACE education and uh, experiential learning that they come to PACE for. And I hope to see all of you and you, your children as they join our community. And uh, looking forward to talking to more of you later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hillary. And now uh, I'd like to introduce Nicole Thompson. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PACE. As the VP of Administrative Operations, I oversee safety and security and dining operations at PACE. So I'm gonna share with you a bit about our teams and the measures that we're taking for the fall. Uh, PACE's security operation is comprised of campus security managers, uh, and we work with a contract security team across all of our campuses. So our security managers have an extensive background in campus safety, and many of them actually joined PACE after careers in the NYPD, Westchester Police Department, um, Homeland Security, and Emergency Management. Our security teams work very closely with our deans for students, our residence life folks, and facilities to ensure that our PACE students um, really understand PACE protocols for safety, that they're prepared for fire safety planning, and any emergency procedures. Uh, we know that our students love their phones, and so PACE utilizes a PACE safety app to help our students to stay both informed and to be prepared at all times. In addition, we have a director for emergency management and environmental health and safety. Uh, he's a certified safety professional with a master's degree in public health, um, and he's been very active in his field for the past 15 years, 16 years, actually. Um, he, as, as uh, the provost mentions, is working with uh, our task force, and he's also leading PACE's case management and campus operations team. And that team is primarily focused on preparing the campus for the return of our community. And so they've been engaged with state and local health officials, and they're following the guidance of the CDC and the Department of Health as they begin to outline the revised practices for the fall. Um, members of our case management team also include our university healthcare unit. Um, and they are working right now in developing partnerships with our local health organizations um, so that they can implement testing and tracing, uh, quarantine and isolation protocols, and campus procedures that are going to continue throughout the semester and uh, would be in accordance with our state guidelines and directives. Uh, in fact, John Hopkins University recently released a nationally recognized standard for online contact tracing. Um, and PACE's healthcare unit, uh, folks from our College of Health Professions and others on campus are going to follow this best practice and they're preparing to serve as contract tracers at PACE in the fall. Um, in addition, the university is developing online training uh, and that will be for our student, staff, and faculty on COVID-19 and staying safe. Um, and that will be using our Safe Colleges training platform. Um, and that's really with the goal of educating the community on the virus so that they understand the symptoms and the policies and programs to stop the spread of the virus. I also mentioned earlier that safety and security works closely with facilities. Uh, and so PACE's facilities team is currently assessing all of our campus spaces. Um, that includes our classrooms, our residential spaces, our assembly areas, our common areas. And they're really working to identify capacities uh, to review our space layouts, our pedestrian routes, um, and looking at even circulation patterns and implementing enhanced cleaning protocols. Um, and those measures are going to look like new signage and floor markings and changing our furniture within the classrooms and our common areas. The facilities team is also utilizing CDC approved cleaning and disinfecting products across all of our campuses and our leased spaces. In the university dining halls, we're also working very closely with our dining partner uh, to adopt additional protocols to ensure safety, both in food preparation and delivery. Um, and these practices will actually further enhance 
Uh, if you've ever eaten in New York, the existing rigorous New York City and Westchester yeah. Department of Health regulations. Um, we know that the changes will transform, transform our dining space. Um, and that's going to include things like distance seating and mobile ordering and pickup, the elimination of self-service stations, installing new sneeze guards and partitions, uh, prepackaged utensils and service wear, uh, and we're also exploring touchless payment systems. So while we, we may have to slightly change options in the whole, um, the dining halls will still offer a variety of food options for our students which includes healthy uh, foods, vegan and kosher meals. Um, personally, as a PACE alum, I'm very excited for the incoming class and the administrative teams are very much looking forward to meeting our new students in the fall. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. And now I'd like to turn to someone who many of you may already know. Um, at, if you don't know Mark, you've probably talked to someone, one of his teammates, Mark. Thank you, Rabina, and good evening. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the financial aid staff to welcome you to Pace University. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. I'd like to start by sharing that the uh, financial aid mission for the entire team is to assist our students and their parents with identifying, thoroughly understanding, and securing every form of financial aid that the student is entitled to in order to help them finance their quality education here at Pace University. Uh, and those sources of aid include, but are not limited to scholarships from the university, uh, as well as outside private awards, grants, and a mix of federal loans and federal awards. And to this end, we have dedicated financial literacy counselors at the ready, in the wings, to assist you in finance and establishing a four-year financial plan. Uh, their information is going to be included in the chat area, and we will also send that to you uh, via email after this webinar. We understand that a number of our family members have been directly impacted financially by this. Uh, I'm sorry, and, Mark, you're breaking up a little bit. So I sorry. think um, maybe we'll move to the question and answer portion, and we'll try to loop back because I do know that many parents would like to hear what you have to say. And I'll just repeat that we will be following up with information via email. We are recording this entire broadcast, but we and we will follow up with email with all of the questions that we're about to answer, as well as um, so at, at this portion, we are now going to turn to the questions and answers. And many of you did what we asked and sent us questions ahead of time. And many of you have this have similar questions. So what we will do is first address those questions, those most frequently asked questions that we got in over the over email, and we'll get to as many of those as we can. Those of you who would like to put in additional questions, we encourage you to use the chat feature and in, in order to give us your questions. And we will make you this promise. All questions will be answered. Even if we don't have time for them tonight, we will get a document out to you that addresses every question that, that is asked. So thank you very much. And now I'd like to introduce two people who you might know. Our Dean for Admission, Andre Cordon, and uh, the Director of Undergraduate Admission in New York City, Michelle Chavez. Uh, Andre and Michelle will be uh, leading this part of the meeting, they will ask the questions and identify the panelists who will give the answer. So, Andre and Michelle, thank you. Thank you, Rabina, and good evening to all. Congratulations again. Uh, Marvin, will both campuses reopen for the upcoming school year first? And then, when will we know about plans for the fall? So we're very optimistic that both campuses will open for the fall. When will we know? I hope very soon. We're working very closely with state officials and I have every reason to believe that assuming we continue on the trajectory we are on, that we will be able to open in the fall. Now, there are a lot of still things that, that, are, that we need to work out. Um, we are planning for various scenarios, as, as the provost said, 
and the way we live, works, play, and study will be different. But we believe that we have figured out ways to reopen safely and responsibly in the fall on both campuses. Thank you, Marvin. Nicole, this question is for you. Will we be practicing social distancing when students are on campus? Uh, that is a word that we're hearing quite frequently. Um, and yes, we will uh, have to get used to this new way of operating in the fall. Um, we know that education and clear expectations are an essential part of us making the social distancing work. Uh, we also know that any plans that we put in place will be dictated by guidance that we are receiving from our state and local officials um, and the Department of Health. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have plans for social distancing in the classrooms and the residence halls and common areas. Um, an example of that might be uh, where I mentioned facilities is looking at layout classrooms where we had a classroom in the past that would have accommodated, let's say, 48 students. Um, we've remapped that classroom and now know that only 14 students can sit in that class and be socially distanced or, or appropriately six feet apart. And that might mean that we have to add new course sections for that class and, and we're prepared to do that. And so that's the level of detail that we're really thinking through um, as we're thinking through keeping the students um, you know, in the classroom and sort of working through uh, this process of being distanced. Um, we're going to have signage. Uh, I mentioned that we're going to include training, um, and this is sort of our new normal. And I hate using that word. Um, I think I, I want to call it our normal for now. Thank you, Nicole. Rabina, this question is for you. Can admit the students defer enrollment for one semester or one year and enroll instead in another lower cost online program? Well, I think first I'd like to address the question of a gap year. And while I understand that there are some parents and students oh, every year that look at gap years, I just want to come out and say that I agree with most mm -hmm. enrollment professionals who believe that this is the wrong year to do a gap year. And the reason for that is that um, the best gap years are years where, you, where students can travel, many times internationally, and where they often do volunteer work in another country. And we know that that probably won't happen this year. And so a student choosing to, to do that kind of a year this year might be very disappointed. Um, and so we, we really do feel that this is the right time to sort of double down on your studies. It's really never been a better time to invest in your education. So now I'm going to ad address deferrals because students may decide that they want to defer. And we, um, if your son or daughter wants to defer, we will grant deferrals. Uh, all you need to do is contact our admission office and give us your intention. Um, we will honor the admission and um, the admission offer that we gave and the scholarship, whether your son or daughter wants to uh, defer from one semester or one year. Usually, under usual circumstances, PACE, like most other institutions, would not honor um, a deferral or admission offer if the student decided during that time to enroll at another college or university, whether it be a community college or another four-year college. But this year, because of the circumstances, we have decided that if a student defers for one semester and enrolls at another college or university, we will continue to honor the admission for for the spring semester. And we will even hold our financial aid um, offer for that student for, for the spring semester. However, if a student uh, decides to enroll in another college or university for a full academic year and earns credit, you know, probably 50, uh, 30 credits or so, then 
now the student is really a transfer student and is no longer a freshman. So in that circumstance, we would ask, um, we, would, we would have a different kind of application process and we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to hold the scholarship for the next year. So um, again, this is why we've extended our deposit deadline until June 15th and why we are giving this, this guaranteed um, refund up until August 1st is because we know that there are different circumstances. And that's why we've changed our policy ab about enrolling uh, somewhere else in the fall. We really want to work with you during these uncertain circumstances. And please, if you have questions or you want to talk about this, just contact our admission office and we will, we will walk you through all the possibilities. Thank you, Robina. Nicole, here's another question for you. Will PACE be testing and tracing? What about other screening measures? Um, so yeah, the answer is we will. Um, as President Krizlov mentioned, uh, we are working and engaged at the highest levels with the governor's office, with the state, with our local health officials to make sure that there is testing available for our students, faculty, and staff. It's paramount um, and we are, are really working through all of the state guidelines. Um, once we know that the final guidelines have been issued, uh, we expect to follow them to every extent possible. And based on these tests, we'll have a few things happening. We would be pre-screening students, staff, and faculty as they return. Um, and we will have continuous testing and tracking in place throughout the semester, as I mentioned. Um, I mentioned that we have a few folks at PACE that are taking that national program with John Hopkins, um, and that is to learn to be contact tracers, and they will be at PACE. And so, what that means is that um, if you know there needs to be tracing done, we will have folks that are uh, available and that are educated on the process and they'll work with our public health officials um, and look to the Department of Health uh, for, for um, any procedures that we need to follow in order to make sure that our community is aware. Um, in terms of other screening measures, there are many things um, that are coming out and coming in our direction. We're exploring things like thermal scanning systems. Uh, we're also looking at, I mentioned our Pay Safe app um, and the person, the company we work with for that app, um, they are rolling out a self-assessment and screening tool on their mobile app. Um, and so encourage your students to download that app um, as soon as they get to campus. Um, because it's very likely that we'll be using that as a tool for testing and tracing as well. So we're ready. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, the next question is for Vanya, uh, but before this, because it ties into this question, uh, just to let all the families know that we will soon be announcing orientation dates uh, to family members that will be taking place in July. Uh, be, there will be online modules uh, for parents and family members, uh, and it will provide you much more information uh, in the next coming weeks. So there's a couple of questions about flying back and forth, which you will not have to do, but this ties into the question. Vanya, will there be an option for online instruction for students who cannot get to campus at the beginning of the semester? Yeah, definitely. We are, um, plans are in development to include remote and hybrid learning during the semester and at the academic year. Um, students who would like to start the fall semester online can do so. Students that are international that are having problem with entering the United States, getting visa appointments, or if they need remote learning for any reason due to the pandemic, we will uh, entertain and we will support those students by providing opportunities to start their um, careers that based online and with hybrid courses. Thank you, Vanya. Hillary, this question's for you. How will we be managing housing, single, for example, single rooms? What safety measures will PACE put in place for housing? 
Thanks for that question, Michelle. And, and first off, I have to say, as the parent of a rising high school senior and a rising college freshman, we all have these questions and we're sharing them. And our kids have these questions, so they're great questions. Um, so we are working, as we've been saying, we've got all these contingency plans, but our housing folks are really focused on really assuming we're going to have some sort of reduced density in the residences and then also how are we going to navigate what it looks like for the areas in which they congregate so we've been working on all the plans of course we're going to make sure that we align with the final cdc regulations final new york state regulations but we're really thinking that it's we're planning for reduced density obviously students who might need single rooms for medical purposes, we are planning for isolation rooms should they become necessary, and we sincerely hope they don't. We are also planning for at the enhanced cleaning protocols, what that's going to look like, making sure that we've got all of those things covered. And then I also just want to make sure that everybody recognizes that the, you know, this is New York. This is New York City, and this is an exciting place to be. People come from all over the world to come here, and so we'll be staggering our move-in, how our move-ins are managed, because we think as people are flying and coming from all different places, we want to make sure we're balancing what that looks like so it's not too crowded. We are able to reduce density in elevators and all of that. And then the other piece to that that I just want to, to also say is that while we don't have the complete answer yet that will be the final answer, we're ready for several variations of that right answer and what it's gonna look like. And for example, Connecticut, it looks like they're leaning more toward suite mates being considered a family unit and therefore their exposure is going to be steady just like you would at home and so we'll be able to congregate together in these smaller group settings and so these are all the things that we're planning for and we don't anticipate New York State being that much different you know we've got over a million public school students who are waiting for these answers they're ready to go back to school their parents are ready for them to go back to school <laughs> as New York State reopens um, everybody's worried about these things uh, so I just wanted to say that uh, we're working together on these and in addition to the residences and what that looks like in in terms of the housing, we are, we literally have already in place what it's going to look like for move in, what it's going to look like based on this density or this density. And my residence directors are asking me literally every day because we have this collaborative team meeting every day. Um, when can I tell my students they can have their, their friends selected? When can I tell my incoming students they can select their, their situations and their, their colleague, their students, their colleagues they want to room with. And so we are hoping to get that out as swiftly as we can. We know it's a big question for our, our staff, but more important, it's a big question for our families and students. And uh, we're ready. We're here and we are working with Nicole's folks. And we are very, very certain that uh, we are going to have a safe, but also really exciting and wonderful opportunity in this community of learning and sharing and growing. So thanks. Thank you, Hillary. I'm ready to go back. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, Marvin, this is for you. How will PACE make sure college students are acting responsibly and doing the social distancing and symptom tracking required to keep other people safe? You're Marvin. muted, Marvin. I am no. sorry. We, we believe in the power of education and the PACE community has done a really remarkable job. We have had students, a limited number of students living in the dorms, and that has been going quite well, and people are observing the, the new norms. I'm sure your students are observing them at home. Um, we are going to take our responsibility to educate very seriously. We're going to have an online tutorial available this, fall, uh, this summer for everybody. Um, we also have a class that I teach one section of every year, called UNV 101. It's the introduction to the university. And typically we deal with everything from um, mental and physical well-being, financial um, well-being, how to study, how to balance your time. Time management is typically the biggest challenge for a lot of our students. And of course, one of the things that we'll be talking about in UNV 101 this year is social distancing and how to operate in this new, uh, this new regime. Um, this is something that we're taking very seriously. It is part of the educational process. Um, we've been working with our faculty and staff 
And so they are all very committed to that and we will be committed to that. And frankly, we will look at you, their families as partners in this over the summer. And I suspect that most of our students already have, have changed the way they behave and are thinking about these things already. Thank you, President Chris Law. Nicole, here's another question for you. In the event of another outbreak, what measures are you taking to ensure the safety of students, especially those from out of state? Uh, so I will, you know, we, we talked about signage and communications. We've talked about cleaning protocols, modifications of our layouts. We've talked about training. Um, so we'll train on hygiene and respiratory etiquette. Um, one of the things I don't know that we mentioned is that our students, staff, and faculty <clears throat> will be required to wear face coverings when they return to campus. Um, I think that's going to be important. It is something that's currently uh, a mandate in New York. Uh, and so we are following those guidelines. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I also um, just want to say, you know, President Krizlov talked about education and it being important. And I feel like we've all had an education in the last three months, right? And so we have gone through this process and we are at the end of the spring term and we made it. I think we did a really good job. Um, and so what has happened as a result of that is that we've learned, right? Um, and so, you know, when we think about this now, I think we're very prepared um, to respond to uh, rapidly changing uh, health requirements um, and that we are set up if there is another outbreak, uh, we'll work closely with our governor's office and our local health officials to follow their guidelines. We've identified that we have space on campus that's been identified for isolation. So we're preparing if we have to isolate students, if we have to feed students while they're isolated. Um, we're thinking through if we have to transport them to a hospital. Um, and that is something that's a, you know, a regular part of our practice and the safety of students is ensuring that they get the medical care that they need. Um, we also, as I mentioned, with the contact tracers, those tracers would work with the Department of Health and the CDC, and they would make contact notifications. So a tracer is identifying if you have a, a, a patient um, or someone that is either symptomatic and or is a confirmed case, they identify where and who they've been in contact with, and then they work with the Department of Health and the CDC to notify those individuals. So. I feel like we are taking every measure that we can. I feel like we have learned a lot from the spring semester. Um, and I believe that we are well positioned to move into the fall with some really good practices in place. Thank you. That sounds great, Nicole. Thank you so much. Rabina, this is for you. If courses are online, will there be a price break? One. And then, what are your refund policies if students have to leave campus in the middle of the semester? So our online classes are being delivered by the same expert faculty with the same course content, the same rigor, and consistent with the same accreditation and state education approved standards as our in-person classes. And in addition to that, we've maintained those small class sizes. You know, this is one of the reasons why um, parents and students choose to come to PACE is because of these very small class sizes, the fact that we don't use graduate assist assistance to do our teaching, and where our students really know their faculty members, they really know their professors. And that's, those relationships, that, that interaction is the same in this remote learning environment as it is in the classroom. And we're also providing all of the same academic support services, such as tutoring, advisement, counseling. And so for all of those reasons, we, we don't think it's necessary or appropriate to offer different pricing for remote education as opposed to, um, as opposed to <laughs> my coworker. Uh, I'm in a meeting. And I can also <laughs> jump in, Rabina, if no, you don't mind, no, because, I teach online as well, and, and, and I often say that 
it takes more work to teach well online. It takes more technology in a different way. And so you've got to be a lot more creative to build that community, to build that active and, and interactive community in a classroom when it's in that virtual environment. So as somebody who teaches both face-to-face -face and online, uh, I would argue that uh, if anything, I'd sometimes think that if you're doing online well, it's more expensive. I just um, want to clarify something because people, the term online and the term of remote learning is different. So when we say that we're gonna go into remote learning, we still have synchronous teaching. It means that the faculty is still in the classroom with the student through remote learning. An online course is something that runs asynchronous and there is not one-to-one -one interaction with the faculty. So if you take a course in Phoenix, which is much cheaper than PACE, you basically have a pre-recorded course that you do at your own pace and you have an, an experience that is not one-to-one. -one. When we, we're saying that we will go to remote learning, it means that we will still have interactions with the faculty. It's just like we're teaching through Zoom or through different activities. So it's a completely, people sometimes use the online education um, and they think that it's Phoenix. And when, when we're saying remote learning, what we're saying is that you will still have that one-to-one -one interaction with the faculty. You will still have a small group. You will still have that virtual community. And it's a completely different experience. We're not doing massive online education. We're doing remote learning and using the e-tools to enhance the teaching. So that's a completely different experience. Um, sorry to jump in, but I just want to clarify that it's completely different um, academic um, tools. Thank you. Thank you all. That's a, a great answer. Uh, Mark, this question is for you. How can we appeal the financial aid and what's the deadline? So let's try this again. Can I be heard? Mm -hmm. Am I coming through clear? Thank you. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to share is that we are aware that a number of our families have been impacted financially by this pandemic. And as a result, what they included on their free application for federal student aid, the income, uh, may not uh, any longer represent the, the family dynamic. So what we are prepared to do uh, in the financial aid office is to review all students who have been impacted by this uh, pandemic, review their financial aid, uh, and we are authorized by the federal government to make changes to the income reported on that FAFSA. Uh, and that will in many cases result in the student qualifying for additional aid. So federal aid and Pace University uh, institutional aid. So we invite you, please uh, visit our portal that we have created specifically for this purpose. It's in the chat area. It will be sent to you via email as well. Uh, there is some information you'll have to provide us with, some steps that you uh, must take, but uh, completing those steps, a financial aid director will get back to you directly uh, and in a formal way and advise you of the additional aid that your son or your daughter might qualify for as a result of going through that process. Mark, thank you so much. Rabina, you're up again. So this is for you. How will career services be pivoting to address the changes that will surely come in a post-pandemic economy? What a great question, because here's one of the jewels, I think, of a PACE experience. Um, we're very proud to have one of the very best career services teams in the tri-state area. Our counselors uh, work with each and every academic school at, at PACE and with their students from the first day they come to campus. Um, and what we found in this changed environment is that, our that we can do our appointments virtually, we can do our resume and interview workshops virtually, and we even do, and the employer networking is working very well virtually as well. Um, we offer virtual counseling sessions and also events like career fairs. You would think that they wouldn't work online, but actually in some respects, I think they're even a little bit better. And one of the things that we're doing in this environment is we are prepping students to 
to do their interviews in this virtual format. We're meeting with them ahead of time and telling them how to connect with people online, how to, how to make that great first impression, how to give them their elevator pitch and, and really win the attention of a prospective employer. We're also in constant contact with our vast employer network. And you know what people are thinking is for our students who are graduating this year, um, and by the way, we had our virtual graduation just today. It was really quite good. And you know what we told students is this was a postponement of graduation because we will welcome them back to campus when we're able to do so for, for a real graduation. But, but we did want to celebrate um, today, and so we did. Uh, but we, uh, we are working with seniors to ensure that, when they, that they get that great return on investment when they graduate with, from PACE. And so what, we, what we've recognized is that there are several areas that are hiring in this environment. And so we're helping our students go to where the jobs are and find those opportunities and connect with these employers who have opportunities for them. So um, we also have a great legacy of men mentorship and we have a, a improved mentorship program that we've been doing over the summer with our alumni mentors. Um, and we have a brand new uh, internship program that uh, we are funding, and some of our some of our very generous donors are helping to fund. That is placing students in nonprofit organizations here in New York City as part of the New York City recovery. Uh, so we just we just have a lot going on. Um, one thing I can assure you is that. Uh, when your son or daughter comes to PACE, they will be fully engaged in planning for their career and collecting the experiences, the knowledge, and the skills that will equip them to be successful in their professional career. I also want to say that um, this is something that we do for your lifetime. So all of you who are out there who are alum, alumna or, or alumnus or alumna of PACE. We, um, we welcome you if you are in a situation where you, where you are looking for work in this changed environment, please contact us. We want to work with you. We want to make sure that you continue to be successful for your whole professional career. Thank you, Rubina. Uh, I think we've uh, covered some of my questions, but we have some additional questions uh, from the chat. So if the, if the panelists are okay, uh, Michelle and I will go through a couple before we run out of time. Uh, so this is to the group, uh, and it was kind of answered, but I think the parents want a little bit of clarity. Can you say with 100% certainty that assuming students are living on campus, that they will not be asked to take classes online? Do you want me to take that? You're more than welcome to. Okay. So, so I would like to tell you that we could decide anything with 100% clarity, but I would have to say that no, I can't say anything with 100% clarity. And there would be a variety of reasons for that. One might be health and safety. One might be a class that somebody is really, really interested in. It happens to be delivered in, in an online format. So I would hesitate to say anything with 100% guarantee that there would not be online classes just for those two purposes alone. And I don't know if anybody else wants to contribute. I, but think, I, would... I think we're going to monitor the situation. Our intent is to be in person during next academic year. However, we have to follow the guidelines from New York State and the guidance from the CDC. We are working very hard to implement things that everybody will be safe and we will have the most um, um, cautious um, system or operations to ensure that we're providing the opportunities for safety and the health of everybody. However, everybody has to understand that the uh, rules by the New York State and CDC surpassed our rules at pace. So that's basically what we cannot give 100%. We have to ensure that we are following the guidelines of our state 
and the guidance of the uh, CDC. Thank you. Uh, this is another question, and uh, for anyone on the panel, and I can also assist if need be. Uh, how about students that are not living in the U.S., international students, and may not be able to travel to attend face-to-face -face classes in the fall? So I recommend that during orientation, we understand that there may be problems with visa, there may be problems with delay obtaining the visa or, or entrance to U.S. There could be other problems uh, related to uh, being able to join the community face-to-face -face or in person. So we're going to have an orientation system and we're going to have a registration. We're going to offer enough courses for people to choose to be in person, to be on a hybrid environment or to be online. So when you're talking to your advisors, uh, please let them know the situation and we will have a schedule that will accommodate any needs that a student has. We understand that what the pandemic, pandemic has shown us is that we're resilient and that we have to provide as many opportunities as we can because everybody has a different situation. So during the orientation period and during talking to your advisor, when you're making your schedule, we will accommodate whatever is needed in order for you to have an amazing experience at PACE uh, and you have an enriched education as that's our plan. I would quickly add, just to add, so we don't run out of time, for those parents to please stay in contact with the International Admissions Office, uh, Robert Medrano, Kelly Moran, uh, please provide your information for your I-20. We are monitoring the situation with the consulates uh, and the offices and work with all our partners. So as long as you provide all the information, we will hope to give you your I-20. And we were making every possible accommodation for you to be here in person. But if you cannot, please contact us and we will work through all the various options that you'll have to still be here, whether it be the fall or in the spring semester. Michelle, take it away. So this is for anyone in the panel. Um, how do you prevent or mitigate at least students from congregating after hours and weekends during the unstructured time? I'll take a stab first, Hillary. Um, sure. So we've, we've talked about tools, we've talked about education, uh, and PACE will focus on that environment. Um, we know that students travel off campus. And so we ask you to help us educate your students and understand that they have a personal responsibility for their health. Um, and so we are gonna provide them, you know, with an understanding about what that means, about what safe practices are. Um, and we would want them, to, while they're on campus and while they're off campus, to really be thinking through their personal health and safety and understand what it means and to follow the protocols that we put in place um, to keep themselves healthy. Thank you, Nicole. And, and I, oh, go ahead, Marvin. Oh, I was just going to say that I'm so impressed by our student life and our res life staff. And during this period where we have been remote, we've created a lot of activities that have everything from virtual dance parties to, to chats and so forth. And you know, that's going to happen this fall too. Whatever we need to do to create community, to create activity, um, with appropriate social distance, we will do that. And we're already thinking about that. And so I just wanted to say that we understand that the social experience is critical. I'm a father of three. And, and, and I know that one of the reasons students go to college is because they want to meet other people. That's what we're, we're all about at PACE. We want them to meet their, their other students. We want them to meet their faculty. We want them to, to meet the world as, 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 as it's available to them. And we're going to make sure that we create the kind of activities and the kind of, the, of, of, of communities that practice social distancing. Now, is it going to be 100%? I don't know. That's, that's a little hard to say. But through social norms and, and role modeling and our staff um, and, and, and older students, I think we're going we're gonna to do that because we've already seen that we've been very effective in that. And Hillary, I'm sorry. I just wanted to... Just no, no, that was great, Marvin. And I was just going to say, you know, we had more than 300 students who couldn't leave our campuses. So, you know, what I wanted to just make sure everybody go, was understanding and on top of what Marvin was saying is th this is the new social norm for our students and their coming of age during this pandemic. And it's amazing because we've seen them congregate with social distancing. I've seen it with my son, with his friends. They're all 17-year-old boys. They're not coming together 
together to play basketball. They're maintaining a distance. And we saw that in our dorms this spring among our students who weren't able to leave. People are very respectful. They're very cautious. We're gonna be doing our training with our students. And I, we're hoping that for the large group settings where we're doing a lot of uh, virtual to supplement, the import person because of reduced density, we're hoping they're still gonna get that same feeling, but from that safe um, distance. And understanding seems to be, uh, these are young adults. And I've been very impressed with what we've been seeing so far. And I anticipate we'll see even more of that in the fall because it'll just continue that much longer. So thank you. I just wanna and jump in, in a second and say um, that we also will have a tracing and you know monitoring the situation so we our uh, plans include testing tracing and ensuring that students will be safe so we have all, all plans that are social distance educate our students ensure that they're track and trace and you know other aspects of it so um it's a very comprehensive plan and we will have this plan available for the community hopefully uh, midsummer, if um, and, and we will have a training for the students to know that uh, what the plan implies. But in case that there is an issue, we also have the tracing and the testing uh, as part of our plan. And our so common spaces, um, Vanya, will be set up in a way that allow the students to spend time with each other and at a safe dis distance. And I believe a few weeks ago, we had a virtual dance party and, and DJ and disco for the students um, that they really enjoyed. Um, and I have seen a lot of that um, even with adults uh, on weekends and uh, trying to figure out how to really make sense of what's happening right now. So we're coming on 628 and I just wanna, if, we, if we're going to end, we can continue, but uh, just a, a very positive note. So the person responds to us, Thank you, Pace, for deciding not to do fall 2020 online. Some colleges have already resolved to doing this 100% online education. Bravo for tackling the problem, ramifications, and contingent plans. So people are very happy, and we thank you for being with us. Um, but I'll, I don't know where we're going to go if we want to continue on, because it's very has been very informative, um, but I'll let the group decide. Well, what I'd like to do is something that we, to, to carry on the theme of that last question, um, we recognize that for many of your students, they're disappointed, just like our seniors were disappointed that they couldn't have their in-person graduation. So first I wanna say to all of you parents who are on this call, congratulations for getting your children to this point. Congratulations for all the work the labor that you put, the labor of love that you've put into bringing them to, to this point where now they're really ready to take that next step and to be responsible at a whole new level and to enter this whole new level of learning that is the college experience. We, have, we are planning a number of events for the fall that will recognize and try to replace some of the things that your sons and daughters missed as a part of their rite of passage this year. We are talking about figuring out how to do some kind of virtual prom and, um, and we've got some other tricks up our sleeves as well. So um, I just wanna say we, we recognize this has been difficult for your students, but in a way this has unleashed a lot of creative energies at pace and we're really ready to, to take it on and to have your students here with us. So we have reached the end of our program at this point. Um, if we have not gotten to all of the questions, I will uh, make the promise that we every question will be addressed. We will reach out to you immediately after this um, session with information, the websites that Mark referred to um, about financial aid. We will post a recording of this presentation on our website and we will get back to you with all of the um, FAQs and questions that were not answered. So thank you, please stay in touch. Please do not hesitate. You know, One of the things about private education is that 
we are here for you. We are, uh, we like to talk to you. We like to be responsive. So uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we pride ourselves on that individual attention that we give to every student. And um, we look forward to seeing you in the fall. Bye-bye.